and I'm going to change my life so that I can be closer to you. I'm going to move to Austin. I'm going to live wherever you live, and I'm going to let you live your life. But I just want to be close to you and, and make up for lost time. Don't you want that? Cretia is a film that's written and directed by Trey Edward Schultz that came out in the year 2015. So Cretia is a film that I personally took upon myself to finally watch because Cretia has been on my radar for way too long. I mean, it's much more than long overdue when it comes to me watching this film because I've pretty much known about this film ever since I've been introduced to Trey Edward Schultz as a filmmaker. The very first film that I've ever seen from him was It Comes at Night, and that was quite a polarizing film. I personally really dug it, and then I saw his more recent film called Waves, and I was floored by that film. I absolutely loved it. And Cretia is actually his directorial debut that he expanded upon from a short film by the same name, Cretia. It's the film that really put him out there on the map, and after finally watching Cretia for myself, I gotta say, it is a damn shame that I took this long to watch this film, because this just might be my favorite Trey Edward Schultz film. I don't, I mean, don't quote me on that just yet, but this film was absolutely riveting. I mean, this film is engaging from start to finish. It's an emotional roller coaster. It's filled with hilarious bits of comedy, just emotionally moving bits of drama um, that's acted beautifully from the lead actress. And it just truly encapsulates the ultimate Thanksgiving nightmare. I mean, Thanksgiving, for a lot of people like myself that suffer from crippling social anxiety is already a nightmarish scenario every single year. And let me tell you that this film does an excellent job at immersing the audience into that social anxiety perspective. And it's not only through the cinematography that is compiled of plenty of one-shot take sequences. Basically, the opening shot to this film is a one-shot take. And, you know, it's, it's simple. But it does require a lot of P's and Q's. It requires actors to deliver lines in certain ways and to react a certain way. And I just think it does an excellent job at hooking the audience and reeling them in. And honestly, one-shot take sequences, I think, is a great trick for low-budget filmmakers to create an immersive experience. Because Take a Thunder Road from Jim Cummings, for example. That film is compiled of a lot of different one-shot take sequences. And most notably, the opening shot to that movie, or I guess I should say the opening scene in that film that takes place in a church. And I mean, that one shot take is just mind-blowingly phenomenal. Uh, just from an acting standpoint, direction standpoint, everything is just so engaging and so impressive. And I think when you have a film like Cretia, and again, other low-budget films that I've seen, like Thunder Road, that utilizes one shot take sequences so incredibly well, it just does an excellent job at elevating the immersive aspect of filmmaking and everything just feels so natural and so authentic. But anyways, kind of went off on a little tangent, but to get back on track, this is a film that its social anxiety aspect and just the stressful anxiety inducing element of it all is also expressed in the musical score that is so off-putting and unique because there's something about the musical score to this film that just feels like it has a loose screw. There's an element of it that just feels off the cuff and improvisational, and that definitely contributes to elevating the social anxiety aspect of this film that makes it feel very suspenseful and very intense. But it's also anxiety inducing because of the way that the screenplay is written and through how it's directed, because on top of the fact that I mentioned that it is compiled of plenty of one take sequences is the kind of interactions and all the activity that's going on on screen, whether it be just stuff going on in the background that just seems so high energy and so chaotic, or just the conversations and the subjects that are happening right in front of you that are also dealing with stressful situations. And it's just the energy and the interactions that are going on throughout your entire experience that again, not only makes it suspenseful and anxiety inducing, but it does feel very authentic, and I also think that the the choice of the 4x3 aspect ratio um, kind of expresses this kind of home video element to it that, especially near the end of the film when it gets really brutal, 
um, again, just elevates that genuine and authentic feel to it that just really packs a punch. Yes, this film is unforgivably emotionally brutal. Um, not just in reference to a few scenes that we get in the second act, but just the ending overall and its finale is, it just delivers such an emotional gut punch. And it's just, again, relentless with telling a brutally honest story that revolves around the main character that is played by an actress that actually does go by the name of Krisha Fairchild. And she's actually the aunt of Trey Edward Schultz himself. And you can just tell that this is a very personal film because Trey Edward Schultz is also in this film who plays a character named Trey. And there's a particular scene in this film, I believe, that occurs in the second act that's between Trey and Cresha. And you can tell, again, that this is a personal film because it involves Trey's character in regards to him chasing his dreams of being a filmmaker and also including Cresha's opinion on that matter. And it's actually a touching scene, but at the same time, so brutal and unforgiving with what it's going for. And again, I'm gonna use that word a lot in this review, brutal, because it's really the best way I can describe the subject matter in this film. And it's also an incredibly integral scene in the film, in my opinion, because it revolves around one of the main themes of the film that has to do with forgiveness and kindness. And I say that because Cresha is clearly a flawed character. I mean, this film pretty much establishes that right out of the gate. And, you know, obviously we get to see what her character snowballs into by the end of the film. But my whole point is that even though Cresha is a flawed character and, you know, does some things in this film that can be viewed as unforgivable, it's, I think the film does an excellent job at humanizing her and kind of allowing the audience to understand why she would go about continuing these mistakes. And in my opinion, thematically speaking, I do feel like this film is trying to express how far something like forgiveness and kindness can go for a human being. And even though said person doesn't really deserve that level of tenderness and understanding from you, I feel like that this film does express that holding that kind of grudge against somebody doesn't do you any justice and it doesn't do them any justice and also has the potential to make things worse for everybody. And I think that's a very strong and powerful message to send because I think it's a conflict in life that not only myself and other people that I'm close to deal with, but it's something that I feel like almost everybody deals with in some way, shape or form. And obviously nothing's universal. There's always different levels of context and nuance that can really change a scenario. But generally speaking, I think that this film does send a very important and powerful message and this very brutally honest way in the finale of this film because the finale of this film just had my jaw on the floor and had my eyes completely watery. I truly did find it to be that dark and that heartbreaking. But one random fact that I just feel compelled to tell everybody about the actress Cresha Fairchild, even though I am 99% sure that 99% of the people watching this are not going to get anything out of this because it's so personal, but she actually did a lot of voice acting earlier in her career, and she actually did the voice acting for the wishing well in the kids' computer game Pajama Sam. Don't even think about it. That is so near and dear to my heart. Um, Pamela Adlon also does the voice for Sam in Pajama Sam that most notably and famously does the voice for Bobby Hill in King of the Hill, and also for Milo Oblong in The Oblongs. But anyway, random personal facts aside, I thought that this was an incredibly compelling piece of filmmaking. Um, you know, as I mentioned, it's, it's humorous, but it's also just emotionally devastating. Uh, the acting pretty much all around is very convincing, and obviously most especially from Cresha Fairchild, she just really gives it her all. And it's really just a perfect demonstration of a low budget filmmaking at its finest. So I'm going to give Cresha a soft nine out of 10. <laughs> to me, this was a very moving experience and I couldn't recommend it enough. So if you were like me and slept on it for years, please don't be like me and go out there as soon as you can and watch this film. I guarantee you it'll be worth your time. And also don't forget to join the Discord for $5 a month through Patreon. We're actually going to have a voice chat right now after this review. And every Friday night we have movie nights. And obviously every Saturday night we have voice chats. So 
It's a blast. I mean, I'm incredibly proud of the community that we've built so far in this Discord. I've made so many friends, talked regularly to all kinds of amazing people across the globe. So please join if that's something that you'd be interested in. But that's all I got to say about Kreisha. If you really enjoyed what I had to say about the film, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content. Mm -hmm.